very warm welcome to you from the Haugang Stadium. It is the final day of the 2020 Singapore Premier League season. Haugang United are playing Alvarex Nagato. Ball out to Nikesh, who slips that through. Farhan, can he finish it? Oh, he screwed it wide. He's got the run if he needs Sowell. Oh, that was close. Oh, they've got the goal. They've found the way through. That's fired over by Doy. Safegani, can you pull the trigger? Oh, he's fired it over. The chance is gone. And that is it. Alberex Nigata have won this match. They have taken the 2020 Singapore Premier League title. Albrecht Nigata, their fourth league title in five years. And your champions of the AIA Singapore Premier League 2020. It's Alberex Nigata. Welcome to the SPL show and welcome to the 2020 AIA Singapore Premier League Champions, Albrecht Nigata, Jess Windersing, assistant coach for the club, Tomoyuki Doi, the front man leading with the goals this season for the White Swans, and Firos Hassan. What a story. We'll get to that a little later on, but a champion for the first time in his career. And Jess, since Saturday, how have the celebrations been? Oh, are you still celebrating? I think we're all still celebrating in our own way a little bit. Uh, we've kind of, we are on our little breaks of our own, but I can't stop smiling since Saturday night, you know. Uh, Tomoyuki, I know after every game, the head coach, Shigetomi, would, would brief the players. Mm -hmm. What did he say after the match to everyone? He, he looks like crying and he, he feels like I'm really happy because this is the first time he became a champion for the manager, for us, and he feels really happy, yeah. Yeah, champions for the fourth time in five years. And Firos, you started the game, you were on the bench when the final whistle was blown against Haugang United, a former side, of course. What were the emotions in you when the final whistle blew and you knew you were a champion? Of course, definitely, I feel very happy and speechless at the same time because there is up and down. With, uh, with my career starting of the season, there was no clubs, all this, and suddenly Elbert giving me an opportunity to play. And the final whistle, I was very, very happy. Uh, like lots of words, can't say anything. Wow, what a final day that was. And uh, first of all, we have to thank 42 for furnishing the SPL show the entire season. Thank you, 42, for all your furniture, home decor, and lifestyle needs. Go to 42.sg. Okay, let's get to the final day of the season. At OTH, our Tampines hub, Tampines Rovers took on Geelang International. Tampines knew that they needed to win and expect Albrecht Nigata to drop points if they were to stand a chance of lifting the title. The equation was simple at Haugang Stadium. Haugang United with nothing to play for, up against Albrecht Nigata, who just needed the three points. Nothing that could happen at, at Tampines hub could affect Anything at Haugang Stadium if Albrecht Nigata claimed the three points. Plenty at stake. It was very tense. It was very nervy. This is the story of the final day title race. Welcome to our Tampines Hub. Welcome to the Eastern Derby. Welcome to one of the most exciting season finales. It is the final day of the 2020 Singapore Premier League season. Haugang United are playing Alborex Nagata. Why is this a massive game? Alborex are leading the table on the final day and are in pole position to take 
the 2020 SPL title. Nagasawa loses the ball out to Nikesh, who slips that through. Farhan, can he finish it? Oh, he screwed it wide. He was through on a very tight angle, but he had more time than he thought. Great work from Nikesh. Slipping that ball through. Lovely run from Farhan. Far East to deliver. And they take the lead. Gellar International. And Barry Maguire starting at centre back. It doesn't matter where he plays. He is a threat and their talisman, their inspiration, puts the Eagles 1-0 up. And was it Barry Maguire or Amy Reka? Maguire will claim it into the near post. Pass shots one, a bullet of a header. Advantage Eagles in the Eastern Derby. Oh, ton. Oh. Got away with that one just about, perhaps. Let's see, here's Daw, he's gonna go for goal! Oh, that's the best chance they've had so far. Put through, look at that. Yeah, it's off the post, isn't it? By Haki up front still, Yase. Clips into the danger area, Hyrule big fist away. Bennett, will he go for goal? Daniel Bennett! Just flashes over the bar. Well, that would be a rarity, Daniel Bennett scoring. You're almost looking like a striker. This could be a little chance. Firoz. He's looking out for the goal. What a shot that is. Again, red one equal to the task. Here I shot with a cross across the face of goal. Not dwelt with Nakamura. Still with Nakamura. Pumped away. Mehmedovic. Good save by Hyrule Sherhan. So important. And Mehmedovic, a minute and a half since coming on, almost getting the equaliser for Tampis Rovers. Wasn't really clear. Nakamura picking up the loose ball, got the shot away. Palmed away by Hyrule. Important second save of Zerudin Mehmedovic. Well, here's Doi. Oh, they've got the goal. They found the way through. Didn't think anything was on. Gave the ball to Doi. Might have even taken a slight deflection of Taniguchi's shot. He may get a better idea here. What was he thinking there, Nazar Nazari? Poor clearance. They're really putting on the pressure. Umar, under pressure here. Here's Jordan Webb. Big save, Shahiru once again. Big chance, Erudin Mehmedovic off the post. Kopitovic, can he finish? Mehmedovic once again. They're trying to walk it in, and they don't. What a let off. And trying to be a little too cute, Tampanese Rovers. How have Tampanese Rovers not scored there? 11 minutes to go. Everyone's free kick. Looking for Kopitovic. And they've got the equalizer. It was by Haki Kaizan, in fact. With a Boris Kopitovic esque header. By Haki with the goal. A deep free kick. Route one and somehow manages to find the back of the net. And he has found the equalizer. Now they need to go on and find the winner. Clip ball, Barry Maguire with the header away. Bennett puts it back. Ichikawa hits it away. Onside is Jordan Webb, who will pick a position down on the left. Cross comes in, looking for Taufik. And here was Shah's offside. Even if it went in, flag went up like a shot. So close to putting it into the back of the net. But credit to the assistant referee on the far side, Ruthran Raj. Taufik Soprano came in like a bullet. Iran rightfully in an offside position. Ball by Nikesh. That's a good ball. Shafegani, can he pull the trigger? Oh, he's fired it over. Their chance is gone. Their best chance of the second half. It's a lovely ball from Nikesh. He let it bounce a couple of times. The angle was getting more and more acute. No great hurry at whatsoever. The referee puts a whistle to his lips. And that is it. Alberex Negata. They have taken the 2020 Singapore Premier League title. There was perhaps potential for drama at the end. But the only goal that separates the two sides is from Ryoya Taniguchi. Seventh minute of time added on. And they've done it. And look at the jubilation down by the Geelong International bench. 
Geelong International have qualified for the AFC Cup. The Stags will finish second and Tammy's Rovers, rightfully so, frustrated by the result here. It's finished Tampa's Rovers 1, Geelong International 1. Here we go. He's going to go over to his side, I'm sure. They're getting ready. And your champions of the AIA Singapore Premier League 2020. It's Alborex Nigata. Yeah, great scenes there. Just watching back on the final day, Jazz uh, brings you back. What were the emotions? Well, looking back at that, what are you feeling about, about that? I think I'm still getting goosebumps uh, watching the highlight reel. Uh, it was tough. Every moment, every minute of the game as he was taking away and we weren't finding the goal, it was getting more nerve-wracking as it was going by. And uh, but the moment that ball went in, we knew it was done. We knew we had a fantastic team that was going to put everything in for the last 20 odd minutes and we knew we were, we were there. I was, I was interested to, to know and I'm going to find out now, going into the match, knowing that it was in your hands, three points would guarantee the title, but if you were to drop points, get a draw, were you in contact with anyone who was providing information or what was happening at our Tampines Hub? Honestly, no. Uh, we were actually more focused on our job. I think more so than uh, this game, I think it was the previous game against Tanjo Paga where our fans actually were updating us on the score of what was happening at Bishan Stadium between uh, Lion City and Tampines. They were shouting the score as it was going in and stuff like that. Uh, but this game, we knew what we were, we were going to do. We knew what we had to do. And we were more focused on doing our own part in order to achieve what we wanted to do. Tomoyuki, it's your first year as a professional footballer. Not a bad way to start your, your career as a professional footballer with a trophy. What were you feeling at the start of the match when you came to Haogang Stadium, I think two hours before kickoff, when you were in the dressing room? What were your emotions? What was your mindset? I think I have to focus on my job. I tried to get goal and, uh, you know, we need to uh, focus on the against Haogang. And uh, nothing. To the, it doesn't matter about the you know other team wizard. So yeah, let's focus on my job. That's it. Yeah. Very determined of getting the job done. Firos, it was a match against your former side, Haogang United. Yes. Um, for you, same question. How were you feeling ahead of the match? Of course, definitely feel very happy and nervous at the same time because uh, after how many years you play in Singapore football, you never win an SPL before in uh, entire career. So this is the first time for me. And at the same time, I still don't want to be like, like feel feel down uh, yeah. to lose a, uh, to a game like with Haogang team. Uh. And this is what you want to feel as a professional footballer. Like you live for moments like this where you're playing for the title. Like how many times in your career would you play for a title? So I think everyone stu uh, stood up when it mattered, got the victory, got the three points and ended up as champions. And we'll have a look at the title slate of the previous winners in the AIA Singapore Premier League, fourth time in five years for Elbrex Nigata. But we will have a look there of the winners from 2020 up till 2015. It's all foreign teams. Local sides really, really need to step up in 2021. Warriors FC were the last local side to win the league in 2014. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys don't care about that. Um, what do you think about, you know, Criticism about having foreign teams in the league, Jazz. I'll, I'll leave this to you. I won't get the players to, to, to get involved with this. But the criticism about having foreign teams in the league and foreign teams winning the league, I think it's, it's it, your point of view, it's up to the local sides to step up and get better than, than the foreign sides. I think it's a, it's a standard we need to meet. I think what the foreign teams are bringing to us is something that we need to know it's out there. Like, it's, at the end of the day, we're all trying to do one thing is to make our national team strong. And if, let's say, our foreign teams are hitting at a certain level, our clubs need to be firing at the same level because our national team needs to meet those teams at that level as well. So I think 
the, the foreign teams playing in the league is just a, it's for us to know the standards that are out there in the world because we want to see Singapore at the World Cup one day mm -hmm. and we need to reach these levels in order for us to compete. Oh, they're putting in a bit for 2034, so maybe we will see <laughs> Singapore in the World Cup. Tomoyuki, let's start with you. I'm going to have a little chat with you. When you found out about the opportunity to come to Singapore and play for Albrecht Niigata, how did the club reach out to you? And you know, how did you find the whole process from there then coming to Singapore? What was it like? Um, when I was a university student, I played uh, like league in the university. So the scout, the, you know, pick up me to the you know, Singaporean league. And uh, I was kind of surprised to, to know that this is the first time to move to you know, overseas country. So, but I feel excited. I was interested about the you know, different culture and different language and also different like, style of football. So I'm really happy to be you know, here. I want everyone to know about your progress, not just as a footballer, but with English. <laughs> because I spoke to you very early on in the season in, in one interview, I think, mm -hmm. and it was decent, but through the interviews that you've had throughout the year, your English has improved mm -hmm. more and more, and I think you credit YouTube mm -hmm. in helping you learn English. Can you tell the, the audience how you've improved your, your English? Um, during the circuit break, I had uh, a lot of time to learn English, so um, I always try to, you know, watching YouTube, but I like to watch, like, football and England football and uh, like some YouTube and I always learning from them. Model professional, model foreigner coming to a new country, learning the language and that's important for, for foreign footballer, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think uh, Doi actually came up to me many, many times. I think most of them actually and was like, teach me a word today. <laughs> Any word. <laughs> I was teaching him English words, I was teaching him Malay words, uh, acronyms that we would use in Singapore, okay. whatever we could use, you know. And uh, yeah, he had that desire to want to know, to know a new language, which ultimately helped him, right? Because he got to bond with his local teammates and the coaching staff and people in the club. Yeah. And not only that, it made day-to-day -day life easier as well. I think for Firos, I mean, to have one of the Japanese players being able to speak English, did it help integrate you when you came into the club and assimilate with everyone else, having someone like him to be the bridge between the other Japanese players and between yourself as a local player. Yes, uh, it's very important sometimes because I don't understand the uh, Japanese words. So Doi, sometimes I, it's either Doi, Hiro or Ryo will help me to translate whatever the coach wants or the players uh, want me to do inside the field and off the field or this. Yeah. So when you, came, when you came, what did you want to achieve? For the team, I think um, I'm a striker and, uh, you know, in the pitch, I try to get goal all, all the time. And uh, even though when I don't have a chance to, to get goal, so I want to achieve the other defender and, uh, like, aggressive pressure. And uh, I want to be getting better a lot of things as a forward. So um, I don't know I did it, but uh, I'm really happy to, you know, win the title. Yeah. yeah and contender for player of the season as well for you. You've had the most shots of anyone in the league. What is that mindset that you have as a striker? Like, whenever there's an opportunity, you're going to go for goal. I think um, everybody, everybody said the uh, Japanese forward, you know, thinking about another option in front of the goal. So I try to, you know, you know, take a shot. And, uh, but sometimes, you know, it's impossible to take a shot. But I don't care about it. Um, final scene, I got the goal, one goal. Everybody has to say as a striker, so... Um, but I cannot be a you know, top scorer in this season. But I take the most of the shots. Um, I want to be getting better for the um, next season. Yeah. Um, for yourself, and I think I want you to speak on behalf of all the Japanese players that come to Albrecht Niigata FC Singapore. It's almost like a stepping stone, isn't it? First year professional, most of your teammates are first year professionals mm -hmm. as well. Given an opportunity to play professional football in Singapore, what is the, the goal when you all come together to play for Elbrex? What do you all want to achieve from this experience? Um, all of the people didn't become uh, you know professional football player in Japan, didn't go to the J League. That's why everybody have uh, you know 
a lot of passionate to you know getting better as a professional soccer player. So I think it's good thing because uh, I found a lot of good thing, um, different culture, different languages, and uh, also football as a professional soccer player. I think everybody feel like same as me. Yeah. And finally, I know you've attracted a lot of interest from clubs in the SPL and from around the region. What does the future hold for you? Um, I just want to be getting better as a soccer player. So I want to be um, moved to more high quality club. Um, of course, I cannot be play uh, Arab leagues because I'm uh, 23 years old. So yeah, the first thing that I need to think about the I feel happy and I want to getting better. So yeah, I don't decide right now. Yeah. But there are options for you. That's great. Uh, Jess, for yourself, I love this story. You lifted a trophy at Haogang Stadium. It was a special moment. For those watching at home wondering, why was it a special moment? You have a close affinity to Haogang Stadium and true family as well. Can you tell us why? So uh, I was uh, part of the old Marine Castle. My dad and my grandfather were involved in the club and I was the boy that was running around and growing up in that stadium every day. Um, so for me, that stadium had a special part of my life. Was a, played a special role in my life and uh, to do it there meant so much. I think I told myself as an 11 year old or an 8 year old maybe that I was going to bring a trophy home here one day and I finally lived a lifelong dream, you know. Fantastic, man. And, um, <laughs> you know, you've, you've worked with the squad from day one. What has been the secret to success of the season? I think the determination that all these boys have. I've never seen a more driven group of players uh, like the one I, I've got the pleasure to work with. Uh, the staff, the, 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 even the back room, the, the people upstairs, they're, they're all great. Like, we're all a family and we're trying to get the same goal at the end of the day, which was to bring the title back. We, we met with, with kids from the soccer school and that's, that was everyone's wish, you know, to bring the title back home to Jurong East. And at the end of the day, <laughs> I think that was what drove us all there. And, you know, Shigetomi gives off a different kind of charisma on the bench. Like, he's very serious. You know, you don't, you see hardly any emotion. If you score, if you concede, he's, he's just that. You don't, you don't know whether he's smiling inside or angry inside. But for, for the viewers who, who are at home and who want to know more about his personality, how he is within the dressing room, maybe not with the players, but with the coaching staff where he, he lets loose a little bit, what is he like to work with? I think he's a, he's a man of few words, but he gets his point across. Like, um, he works with his uh, staff very closely. Um, he lets us know what he wants. He, he, he's, everyone's on the same page when we're stepping out onto the pitch to, for training or for games or anything like that. So, he's the leader at the end of the day. And he is, in a way, that father figure or that the ones that's going to push us all to do the, our jobs. So, he basically brought it all together. We were all individuals, and then he brought us under the same umbrella. And yeah, so he's a pleasure to work with. Yeah. And he might, like I said, he might not show it because he's a man of few words, but I, I think he's a great coach. Tomoyuki, how is he as a coach? Um, especially before the game, he, he always told me to, you know, give me the good, um, like, passionate about the match. You have to do more. And uh, I feel like really good, good thing as a manager. So especially like in the during the training, he say nothing about me because he could believe me as uh, you know I I'm gonna do the you know that I can do job in the pitch. So yeah, he's a good coach. Faros, you came in mid season or well after the COVID break. Uh, what did he say to you first day of training? Nothing Did much. you understand him? <laughs> uh, first of all, he never said anything much to me, but he just uh, smiled. Then he asked me to work hard with the team, uh, work hard and just enjoy with the team. That's all. I think of oh, it's an incredible story for Tomoyuki. Uh, 
first year as a professional to, to win a title. For Jess, come, comes full circle from the Marine Castle days at Haogang Stadium to lift the trophy at Haogang. But for you, I think perhaps more incredible is you started the season without a club. Yes. Uh, you were part of Warriors FC and they closed down. You were on the verge of retiring. We yeah. saw the, the newspaper coverage of, of you and, and you needed to do some odd jobs to keep yourself you know, alive and put food on the table. Yes. Uh, you were training with Young Lions for yes. a very long period to keep yourself fit. After all that, to come away with the title, was it all of it? Yes, I think there is like uh, there is up and down in my t uh, entire career this year. There is uh, during the Warriors, uh, they told us that they are letting us go, but without a club. So I really appreciate those FAS and Sports SG Eugene helping me and those players uh, to give us the job. I mean, a job to work with FAS at the same time and to play training with the young lions all this. I know I saw you, I saw you I think on your second day of training with the club when you came in to, to be part of Albrecht's Nigata. I think you were on trial at the time. Yes. And uh, you guys were just running around the pitch. At that point, you had no idea when the season would start, if the season would start. Yes. Uh, but you were just running and, and you know, you, you, it's a different level, isn't it? From, from playing in an SP, a normal local SPL club and then joining Albrecht's Nigata where the focus is on fitness. Yes. Um, overall, besides the fitness, uh, how did you adapt to the different style of play? Of course, definitely the first day I was struggling. Uh, first day and the first, I should say first week, uh, first week I was struggling with Elbrex uh, because during that circuit breaker, they allow us to train five, five mm. on each side. So after that, we need to have uh, fitness and they make us run every single day. So yeah, I was struggling every, every single day. You, you mentioned about the sacrifices you've made. You've had a long career. Mm -hmm. You're the second oldest player in the club. Uh, you've had a long career playing in the SPL. We were teammates prime league yes. level a <laughs> long time ago with, with Senkang Pungol. Now to be a, an SPL champion, what does the future hold for you? And, you know, all the sacrifices you've made, when you think back, is this the highlight of your career? Yes, I could say that after how many years uh, since uh, I played football in Singapore Premier League since 2007 with Jazz and yourself. Yeah. Uh, finally, I have won an SPR title and after I win this title, I think I must keep on motivate myself and keep on going uh, for the next year. You know, there's something missing here. We don't have the trophy on set, but I do believe you guys have the medal. So please, wear the medals. I, 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 I don't know when you would ever wear the medal ever again, right? You, you wouldn't wear it around the house. Maybe just you would wear it around the house or you go down <laughs> to 7-Eleven or something like that. So please, take out the medals and, and put it on and show off. Fantastic. Champions, first time for all of you as well, champions of yes. the AIA Singapore Premier League. Wow. Looks good on you guys. Looks really, really good on you guys. All right, let's have a look at the other matches uh, from the final day of the season. And at Bishan Stadium, Lion City Sailors had nothing to play for. They had already qualified for the AFC Cup. Belista Kalsa, though, still had hope of qualifying for the AFC Cup to join Lion City Sailors in 2021 for the group stage. Plenty of goals the last time these two sides met. Eight goals in that one, seven in this encounter as the goals flowed at Bishan Stadium. Continental competition on the cards for the Lion City Sailors. That's already been confirmed. Uh, Sekalsa are still having work to do in this game. We'll see where they end up at the end of the 90 minutes. There's Krychek, who has space. Has a crack at... It's come off the crossbar. It's played into Shariel. He's onside. Can he finish? It's a simple finish in the end for Sharia Lishak. I think he was played onside there by Fadli Kamis. Didn't push up with the rest of his defence. Good play once again from the Lion City Sailors in the build-up. Up is not turning on the afterburners. He's got Arshad in the box to aim for. Cuts it back to Saifola. What a goal for the Lion City Sailors. Just have a look and appreciate the beauty of this one. Started it out from the back. Played it out through to the lines and the pace. Once the opportunity opened up, Hafiz, no, have a look at this. He's already looking across, looking for options to arrive. 
So I fuller with that late run into the box. Punched away. It's come back out to Krychek. Swing and a miss. Hoshino! It's come back off the post. It's all happening here with a league leading 49 shots saved. Half is no. Into the box. And it's an old goal. It just goes from bad to worse for Ballester. Fadli Kamis trying to get that clear from his box. Only manages to clear it into Danish Uwais. You do feel sorry for Danish there. Launched it long, looking for Samir. Set it back to Rudy, but he's made a meal of it. That's a beautiful finish. Ashime Zuzul. But it's turned into an opportunity for Ballester Kalsa. Thanks to some hesitation here from the Lion City Sailors back line. It's the Jelly looking to play it back to Rudy, who slipped. And then Sime Zuzul. It's Lion City Sailors now again with an opportunity on the counter. Shadan pushes through into Song. He's onside, takes his time and gets his goal. Wonderful composure showed by Song Yu Yong. Picking the right passes in the right moments. That ball into Song, he's clearly onside. Sharia Lisha, smart enough to just leave it. Song Yu Yong here just sits the defender down. Get themselves another goal, I'm sure they'll take it. The cry check drives in, he's got an option down the left. So Fadmi finds Zuzul. 4 2 now. Sime Zuzul getting his sixth of the season. The win that they need, but there's still time. If at least got themselves another goal back here. Faisal. Shadan. Oh, it's gone all the way through the Song of Young. He's found the fifth goal for the Lion City Sailors. It went all the way through, and Zaiful Nizam is going absolutely ballistic here. With the efforts of his side in front of him. Players shirking their responsibilities defensively. Balls that have been put in place have allowed it to run along smoothly. And Jansen Fu blows the final whistle. It ends 5 2 to the Lion City Sailors. Yeah, Ballester Kalsa must absolutely hate playing against Lion City Sailors. 7 1 in the first meeting, 5 2 winners for Lion City Sailors in this encounter. Ballester Kalsa missing out on AFC Cup football. And in an earlier episode of the show, and I know I'm going to get some hate from you, Jess, and from you guys here, I said if the league went to the original three rounds, I would favour Lion City Sailors to win the league just due to the fact that they have clicked with Aurelio Vidma in charge and they just look so powerful going forward. Having said that, you guys beat them twice in the, in the league, so what do I know about them? But what do you think about Lion City Sailors uh, getting stronger and stronger as the season went on? Yeah, I think they, every game made them a closer unit and a lot harder to beat. Uh, you saw the game against Tampines, you saw the game, games against us as well. They are a very big threat in this league and I think they, they are definitely a very, very big contender for next year. That is the Kalsa missing out uh, of AFC Cup football. Marco Krelovic will be disappointed. What do you make of Ballester Kalsa as a team? They, they have their way of playing football very direct, but you know, how disappointed must they be to miss out on AFC Cup football when actually, once we know the results now, a draw would have been enough for them. Pyros. I think they will be definitely will be them demoralized because they really want to go for AFC after if I'm not wrong was the last time was Po uh, Feng time yeah was with Marco as well yes. yeah so I think they really want it to be in the A AFC but then uh, it's not the right time for them yeah just not the right time for Ballester Carl so all right we'll have a look at the final game of the last round of fixtures from Jurong East Stadium as Tanjong Paga United took on the Young Lions in the battle of the basement dwellers. Tanjong Paga United looking to get their first win of the season. But Young Lions have improved as the season has gone on. Here's what happened from Jurong East. 
And then there was one. A very good evening and a warm welcome to the Jurong East Stadium for the final match day of what has been a truncated but tantalizing AIA Singapore Premier League season. All eyes will be on the title tussle at the top between Alborex, Nigata and Tampere's Rovers. But our focus here will be on the basement battle between Tanjong Paga United and the Young Lions. Referee says play on and that is an outstanding goal. The warning sign was there. And the Young Lions have gone on to capitalize and take the lead in this basement battle. Can they finish the half strongly though? Raihan Stewart has, is in the box for Tanjung. And he's taken a shot and that is Raihan Stewart who's made it to. And that is another spectacular goal from the Young Lions to double their lead going into the break. Raihan Stewart is congratulated by the coaching staff. Kairin Nadim with his second goal of the season, followed by Raihan Stewart. And that is 3 0, would you believe? And it's done and dusted by the look of things. It's Ilhan Fandi who's found himself on the score sheet. Ilhan Fandi was picked out as the man to watch in the build-up and he's proven why with a second goal of the season. He's given the ball away. Luis Junior will look to play Faritz in. Faritz with a chance. And did Jacob Mala get the ball? No, says the referee. Jacob Mala with a last-ditch sliding tackle. Got none of the ball, says the referee. No mistake from Luis Junior. Tanjong Paga have a lifeline and it's come from a spot kick by the talisman, Luis Junior. Loves the ball at this feet, Adam Abdullah. And yes, found a teammate. Has gone all the way in and that could be that. It's Kairin Nadim with goal number two and goal number four for Young Lions. The 17-year-old continues his breakthrough to Singapore football and he might well have finished off the Jaguars here. It hasn't exactly gone to plan. Luis Junior though can pull one back and he does. A consolation and goal number seven for Luis Junior. So Tanjung Paga do get the final say. This could be a final chance from Luis Junior. And he's put that high and wide. And that would be the final touch of the ball. And it's Tanjung Paga United. Two young Lions for the Jaguars finished the season without a win. The young Lions, though, finished the season with a plum. Four goals. Kyrin Nadim at the double, opening the scoring and then capping off a brilliant display with goal number four for the team. Between that, Raihan Stewart and Ilhan Fandi were amongst the goals for the young Lions. Luis Junior did grab a late, late consolation for Tanjong Paga United. Unfortunately, it's Tanjong Paga who finished the season without a win and now become the first team in the league's 25-year history to go without a win all season. Impressive victory by the Young Lions and the first game from the restart was the match between the Young Lions and Albrecht Nigata and you guys were comfortable winners there. They didn't have enough players on the bench even. Mm. Looking at that, they have improved as games have gone on towards the end of the season, Jess. I think they had a game plan. Uh, that they, they formulated a game plan during the whole COVID period and played to their strengths. If you realise, I think from the preseason when we played Young Lions, Jacob Marlowe was playing in midfield. And now when we restarted and played them the first time, Marlowe went back into, the, into defence. Yeah. So I think they started to shore things up and uh, they had a proper game plan going into 
coming back into the season and I think all that hard work they put in, I think it, it, it's, it worked at the end of the day. Yeah, looking good for the SEA Games in 2021 where the bulk of this squad will be representing Singapore. On the other hand, Tanjung Paga United, as you've heard in the commentary, the first team in the 25 seasons in the AIA Singapore Premier League to end the season without a victory. So, uh, a building process for them, you share the same stadium and I think it might be the first time in SPL history where the two teams who share the same stadium and in opposite sides of the league, Albrecht Negata champions, Tanjung Paga United, bottom of the table. Alright, so we've not seen any fans in the AIA Singapore Premier League since the restart, even a few games before the break, the COVID break, fans were not allowed into the stadiums, but there was a pilot test and this is historic because this could see the return of fans back in 2021 for all the matches uh, in the AIA Singapore Premier League. 200 fans were allowed in this pilot test by FAS and Singapore Premier League, 150 Tambis Rovers fans, 50 Geelang International fans for the Eastern Derby at our Tampines hub. They had to go through a COVID test, a little swap test, which was free of charge for them. So let's have a look of how this all panned out in a milestone period for the AIA Singapore Premier League. Farah with the report from OTH. The 2020 AIA Singapore Premier League has been unlike any other. The closest title race in recent times showcasing local football at its very best. But in light of the global pandemic, a massive part of the true football experience has been absent. That is, until the very last day. We are here at our Tampines Hub for the massive final day showdown, the Eastern Derby between Tampines Rovers and Geelang International. But what makes today even more special is that we will finally have fans back in attendance for the first time since the restart back on October 17th. It's, it's exciting, you know, I've come to the stadium and watched from the outside. You know, Tampines Hub, there's many windows to watch, but it doesn't beat um, being in the stadium, enjoying the atmosphere, you know, with the fans especially. Um, enjoying that in this daunting time is a privilege, I'd say. It's definitely exciting to be back on the stands. Um, even though limited, um, limited capacity is allowed, but it's better than nothing. I think we all feel excited. We've been waiting for this day to be able to come back to the stadium to support them. For the 200 fans who had managed to get their hands on the limited tickets, they were made to go through a set of safety protocols and an antigen rapid test upon arrival to the venue all part of a pilot test by the Football Association of Singapore. I think we look back, it is before we came to this position, it was in phases. It was 17 of October when we resumed the league. That was the first step and there was a confidence that we garnered, the fact that everyone adhered to the safety regulations. Uh, we went into a discussion with the authorities and this is a pilot test, not just for football, but I think in general for sports for future as well. Very seamless actually, so getting tickets online is as easy as it's always been. And then arriving today for the test, I think we were done within a couple of minutes. Very well organised, uh, very quick, very reassuring, some, some kind words before it. And the actual test itself is, 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 pretty, is pretty straightforward, yeah. So booking the tickets was actually quite smooth. I just had to be you know, a bit quicker before the tickets sold out. But as for the swap test, I think it was pretty fine. It, it wasn't too invasive, like, as they say, but yeah, it's whatever it takes to be back in the stadium, we all, yeah. A huge and necessary step forward in these unprecedented times that will hopefully bring life back to stadiums across the country once more. I think we have come to a stage where this is what is going to happen, at least for the foreseeable future. And the fact that we can still continue to do this, still get to get uh, the life. I think fans can still look forward to be able to catch those life. And uh, I think that should be able to continue as long as we adhere to what is required. We will take back any lessons that we, we get out of today's test and then apply it to ensure that it continues into a new season. Yeah, I think, uh, as I said, it's, it's very well organized, uh, staggered in terms of you have a time, so there's no hold up. And the actual experience itself, I'm sure, will it will become quite normal for everyone to have the test. And it's really not much of an inconvenience, I would say. Yeah, I don't mind getting swapped every single week. I don't mind doing it, it's for the team, why not? Well, sacrifice every part of my body doing it. 
yeah, great to have fans back in the stadium, and it really, really added to the atmosphere of the Eastern Derby, which ended one all in favour for Gila International as they qualified for the AFC Cup. Tammy's Rovers finishing second in the league. All right, let's get to the results and confirmation of the final day of the season. Here's what happened. Albrex Nigata on top with the important three points. Rioya Taniguchi with the goal, a victory that confirms them as the 2020 AIA Singapore Premier League champions. At Jurong East, Tanjung Paga United, winless for the season. They went down by four goals to two against the Young Lions. Over at Bishan, goals galore as Lion City Sailors beat Ballista Khalsa by five goals to two. And at Hoti H, as we saw, Tampines won, Geelang International won. So this is how the table looks at the end of the season. The gold for champions, Albrecht Nigata, champions on 32 points, 10 wins, for the season, the most of any SPL club. Tampis Rovers with the colour code, their second place, 29 points, qualifying for the AFC Champions League group stage in 2021. The first time for the club, so big, big milestone as well for Gavin Lee and for the Stags. Lion City Sailors and Geelang International will play AFC Cup football in the group stage next season. So it will be an interesting season for the Sailors and for the Eagles. Tanjung Paga United, as you see there, 14 games played, no victories, five draws and nine defeats. Five points for the season, bottom of the table. Let's have a look at the top scorers list. And Stipe Plazibat, to the dismay of Tomoyuki Doi, will lift the golden boots at the end of the season. 14 goals, he missed the last couple of matches, but that was not to matter as he will be the top scorer for 2020. Tomoyuki Doi had a lot of goals towards the end of the season, but had too much to do on 11. He finishes and Gabriel Quack ends as the highest local goal scorer with five goals. These three players I mentioned, coincidentally, the three contenders for player of the season. We won't know the result because we have recorded this prior to awards night. So congratulations to all the winners uh, from the awards night, from FAS nights. All right, what a season this has been. Congratulations, Jazz, Tomiyuki and Firos, champions of the AIA Singapore Premier League. Who knows what will happen in 2021? Will the foreign teams continue to dominate local football or will we see a local side lift the trophy? Will we see Tampines Rovers do it? Will we see Lion City Sailors spend even more money and perhaps be the champions of 2021 or will Abrax Nigata retain their crown? Who knows? It's been a fantastic season. Really enjoyed bringing you weekly coverage on the SPL show, especially towards the end of the season where we went every two, three days. The players are tired, we are tired, but it's time to take a nice break. Thank you for tuning in to the SPL show. Do come back in 2021. There will be a new host for the show, but do support the Singapore Premier League once again. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we will see you in 2021. Welcome to one of the most exciting season finales in the history of the AIA Singapore Premier League. Referee says play on, and that is an outstanding goal. And they take the lead, Gaylar International and Barry Maguire push the Eagles 1-0 up. Turning on the afterburners, he's got Arshad in the box to aim for, cuts it back to Saifola. What a goal for the Lion City Sailors. Luis Junior though, can pull one back and he does. So Tanjung Paga do get the final say. Everyone's free kick, looking for Kopitovic and they've got the equaliser. By Haki with the goal. Oh, they've got the goal. They've found the way through. And your champions of the AIA Singapore Premier League 2020. It's Alvarex Nigata.